Hello, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and uh, every Thursday we get together and we draw something. We try to draw it reasonably well, but we don't always draw it terribly well. But as you could see, lots of people drew frogs incredibly well. I mean, more people than we expected. More people than we expected. Uh, that is JJ, who joins me here from the other side of the room <laughs> <laughs> where um yes so there were lots and lots of, of uh, incredible frogs we drew those last week and um in celebration of national frog jumping day whatever that is you know th <laughs> did you celebrate it no did not there you go hey check it out hey check this out yeah. Yep. New merch. <laughs> new merch. Yours is out of focus. Oh, that's sad. Take it back. Take it back to your face. Yes. Iced coffee season, so therefore I had to, uh, you know, re-engineer the serving utensils. We also got this... Uh, water bottle? Yeah, new water bottle. Yeah, so... Good for going to the gym. It's a little bit more chipper. As if we ever do that. If we do, we will be well hydrated and well branded at the same time. A little bit more important than that. Yes, so uh, it is very hot here in Phoenix. What is the temperature right now? It's 82, but what's it going to be? Over 100. Let's just leave it there. Over 100. Yeah, this is, we live in a hellish inferno, but, you know, we stay indoors. Um, what else? We are recovering. Last night we went out to... A music show, one of the first live music shows we've gone to in ages. And uh, I mean, we were awake until almost midnight. <laughs> we're old people. I think we old. need to qualify uh, any lackluster performance in today's yeah. session because I will admit to you, we are tired. <laughs> we're tired. We're old. We were standing on our, on our hind legs for four or five hours, surrounded by crowds of teenagers because we, we were way too old to be there. But we liked the band, so that's why we went. And uh, it was great, though. It was just so nice to be in a place where you can still catch COVID. <laughs> Live music. <laughs> so, Live music. Live music. But it was, it, it, was, like it. it was great. It was great to... Uh... JJ is your wife. <gasps> she is? <laughs> she used to be my girlfriend. But I made it legitimate. So, yes, JJ is my wife. Um we are legally legally married, legally allowed to go to uh, get COVID together. To get COVID together, hopefully we didn't. We'll see. We saw the band we saw is called. Oh, it's not really a band; it's a single person called LP. Not to be confused with CD or Forty Five. Yeah, she has the most awesome voice. The most amazing. We, the whole time we kept saying, "Why isn't she more famous than she is?" She's so she's a star. She's a star. She is, so it was really fantastic. It's like modern opera. Her voice is just so incredible. She, yeah, you should. And she's tiny. Check tiny her out. Size. LP, just yeah, two letters. LP, check it out. All right. Let's move on because Positive Academy is getting is getting pushy. Wants to know what we're going to be drawing today. I mean, that is why people show up here. True. So what we're going to be drawing today is going to be interesting. It's going to be exhilarating. It's going to be fantastic, and you're going to enjoy it. I would get out some stuff, get out some drawing stuff, and uh, get ready. Limber up. All right, so let's move on. Um, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to this channel. Positive Academy, have you positively subscribed yet? All of you, subscribe and like this video. It's all I ask. Let's do it. Okay. Um, what I was going to do here. Oh, yes, of course. I was going to talk about the Gray Book from Hanamula because that is the uh, platform for today's exercise. So the Gray Book is uh, gray paper in a book, in different sizes. And if you're wondering, well, what I wonder what that's going to be like, I'm going to show you. But also, I'm going to give you... How many are we giving away? Three. I just put it in the chat. We're giving away three free the gray books from our friends Hanamula 
in Germany, well, they're actually in America, and because they're in America, we can only give them to Americans. That's just the way they operate. You know, we're sponsored by Hanamula USA, which means all you have to do to win one of these books, what, do you know what the dimensions of them are? I just posted it. Eight and a quarter by five chat. and three quarters. Eight and three quarters. There are eight. 40 sheets. 40 sheets. So it's a lovely little book. It's a slender book, so you don't get, uh, you know, you'll be able to dive in to draw, drawing on tone paper. Have you ever done it? Um, so, yeah, so we're going to be giving these away. All you have to do to get one is write to us at info at sketchbookschool.com and say, I want one. And here's my mailing address. I mean, say and better I, than I want one. I, I was going to elaborate on okay. that. I'm just laying out the groundwork for it. I'm building my way up. So first, tell us why you want it. Why should, why should you have this great book? What are you going to do with it? What intrigues you about it? Tell us a bit. You know, the more, the more you entertain JJ, the more likely you are to win it, unfortunately. But it's a random drawing, despite that. Despite having said that, it is, we randomly draw these, right? For sure. And I pick new people every time. And we've been doing these giveaways for, I mean, consistently I now for, but, I would say, a year. So a lot of people, I mean, yeah. in, if, in the chat, I bet you'll see a lot of people say, I got something awesome. I know. that's uh, So if you didn't win one, you can win one. Eventually, at some point, are we going to start allowing people who did win? Like, is there a moratorium? Is there like I don't a, know. I mean, we still get a lot of fresh new people. I feel like... We want to spread this love around. Yeah, you you people who are loyal oh to us. Oh, my goodness. You, you wonderful people who are loyal to us and watch us on a regular basis, you've probably already won. So, yes, so some folks are, are telling us how they've won, and that's great. All right, so, so we'll talk about that book in a minute. But first I want to talk about the exciting... This, this is a landmark day and week. It's a very important day and week, and let me explain why. So first of all, as you probably know, it's National Stationery Week. You're you're a fan of stationery, right? JJ? I mean, I like a greeting card. No, I but like, you like a pen. Yeah. You like pens and I, you yeah. like Yeah, I do. You know, we I all like, do. I like all that. Right? Stuff. We all like we all like, you know, pens. I used pencils. to really like the stationery store, stationary like Kate's Papery. Right. You go into oh, the stationery store, you can spend, it's, I mean, the art supply store is great, but the stationery store is also really great. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we're celebrating all week. Let me read you a bit about what it says that you're supposed to do on National Stationery Week. Stationery enthusiasts from across the globe are celebrating National Stationery Week by spreading the word about what the week is all about and how it should be celebrated. Okay. Um, what is it about exactly? Um, it's time to fill your pencil cases, sharpen those pencils, invest in a new notebook, and get ready to s celebrate. I um, mean, yeah. does anybody really care about Stationery Week? Yes, <laughs> a lot of people uh, really care. You guys care, right? Nobody cares. Okay. All right, so it's, it's moving on then. It is, in fact, National Stationery Week. It's also... National Notebook Day. Day. Now, I'm a big fan of the notebook. I like the sketchbook and hold it at the highest level of bookdom. But <laughs> right below that is the, is the notebook. I mean, Note you have so many notebooks Look. laying all around. Well, you tend to call sketchbooks notebooks. Here's, the, here's Danny's notebook. Highly confidential. Wait, wait. I have to show you. Yeah, 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 hold it. <laughs> show. show the cover again. Yeah. That's 70, 742F, please. I don't, want, I don't want to share. There's a lot of inform yeah. important information there. Yeah. All right, so it's National Notebook Day. And um, you should celebrate it. How do you celebrate National Notebook Day? Well, here's what National Notebook Day really is about. It's about journaling. Um, it's been celebrated since 2016. So it's a fairly new holiday. The inauguration of Notebook Day. To speak to the world about the importance of journaling and what it can do to help us. Okay, we agree with this. Right? Yeah, agree. So, yeah, so I think that that's a good thing. And I think we should, uh, you know, notebooks, planners, bullet journals, all that stuff. Today's the day to celebrate it. Grab a notebook, bust it open, and start writing down your thoughts, your worries of the day. And put them to form that becomes manageable. So, I think also if I write something with my hand, I remember it so much more than if I type it. That's true. 
So there's that. Yeah, so we like National Notebook Day, but that's not really what we're here to celebrate. What we're here to celebrate today, but boom, boom, <laughs> it's also National Accounting Day. Calm down, people. <laughs> it's National Accounting Day, and uh, let's let's get into it because it's not only National Accounting Day; it's actually International Accounting Day. And uh, you know, we're celebrating how important accounting is to businesses. What an incredible, exciting career it is to get into. <sighs> you know, all that stuff. We have a lot of people come to Sketchbook School after having been an accountant for their oh, entire good point. yeah. yeah. And then but how do you feel about it? I mean, we know quite a lot of accountants, strangely. I feel they are the best people. <laughs> I mean, accountants are, yeah. they're honest. They keep our business alive. They're, they're, fa they're, they're fascinating. They're fastidious. They have an eye for figures. Um, what else can we say about them? They make the world go round. Yeah, we're, we are. Right? I mean, we'd be in prison. Yeah, we'd be in prison if it wasn't for our accountants. CPA. And how would that be? I would, I would be like to, to say gold, also, yeah. just as a total sidebar, yeah. after we talked the last time I was on about the mailbox, the P.O. box being full of cookies and cool zines. It hasn't happened. I went last week. There was one letter from the IRS. That was it. I was like expecting Thanks. it to be like exploding with cookies. I was but like, that means oh. that the IRS probably watches draw with me. <laughs> Thankfully, so thank thankfully you, IRS. there was no money due, but it was like the IRS still but has that's to correspond with you. They still have to pee on it. You know, they've got to like pee have the it. last word, you know, like got to pee on it. Anyway, you that, think was the postal sad, that was a sad trip. Do you think the Postal Service Very told them about it? Very sad us? trip to the uh, yes. post office. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this, but I'm going to say it again. When it comes to getting the gray book, you have to give us your mailing address. Don't mm. just don't just email us because we don't know what we can't email you the gray book. We can only go to the post office and mail it to you, and we do, and pick up whatever letters come from the IRS. Oh, people are asking the PO box. I'm going to give it to them because they might be sending me zines or cookies or something that isn't uh, super depressing. That was, I was, I was sad. I mean, I came to the PO box with like too high expectation. Put it in the chat and I'll add it I'm to the screen. I'm trying to find it quickly. I'm trying to find it quickly. So we're not going to draw numbers now. We're going to draw something even more thrilling. I think thrilling. Because I'm going to introduce you to a really fascinating person. And that person is, wait for it. Here we go. That person is... Uh oh. Not Twiggy. Luca Pacioli. Does anybody out here oh, not. Leaf blowers? They are not does not anybody here not know about Luca Pacioli? Uh, JJ, what do you think? What, what's your favorite thing about Luca Pacioli? I mean, I'm a big fan of his time period. Okay, so Luca Pacioli. It in college, it was my major. So Luca Pacioli, mm -hmm. um, JJ was a big fan of the. Renaissance and the Middle Ages. Yeah, the Middle Ages. Middle yeah. Ages. So that's, the Renaissance is Luca Pacioli. Is, second, he's close. definitely a Renaissance guy. Luca Pacioli. So Luca Pacioli is the father of modern accounting. He invented, basically, wrote the book on on, uh, on double uh, entry, double entry accounting. But he's a really interesting guy. When I started digging into it, I was like. This guy is fascinating. So, first of all, he uh, also wrote the first book, known book, on card magic. Which is amazing. Card magic. He also wrote um, and wrote down like a lot of the basic principles of mathematics for just the average person. And that's how he came to write the original book on accounting. But here's what's really interesting about him. You see the guy to the right of him? This guy, who is, he looks, he's not a former member of a 70s hair band. I mean, the hair. Right? He's like, he's like Bob Ross. But, but also the look, the look, the kind of pursed lips, the whole thing. He's, uh, he's quite something. And he might be, nobody's quite sure, but he might be Albrecht Dürer. Right? You all know who Albrecht Dürer was, of course. Famous German painter and... Uh, Etcher and just an amazing all-around guy. All-around good guy. Yeah. Albert Dürer was the guy. But who you can't see in this painting, but who's also a major character in the story, 
Leonardo da Vinci. It's no, thought man. it's thought that Leonardo da Vinci may have had something to do with this particular painting. And I believe it. They're not sure, but one of the reasons that they think that is is oops is um, this you see this kind of floating decahedron or whatever it's called. They're thinking that 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 it looks like Da Vinci. It does look like Da Vinci painted that, right? It does. And so they think that Da Vinci, because if you look in the lower right-hand corner, that thing is much clumsier looking and less expertly done. But that floating glass ball, so the thought is, but they do know that Da Vinci and Luca were big pals. And in fact, Da Vinci illustrated Luca's books. Can you imagine having Leonardo Da Vinci as your illustrator? That's that's happening. So yeah, so so here's this guy. Turns out he's actually really fascinating. He and the reason the Durer was there to visit him, it came from Germany, was because Luca codified, wrote down all the laws of perspective and explained in a book form the laws of perspective. So he's a pretty important guy all around. And actually, even though I was showing it to him in an, in an, even though I brought him up sort of uh, randomly. Turns out he's actually pretty important. So, and guess what? We're going to draw him. Yeah, he's going to be our subject, Luca Pacioli, because his 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 face is sort of interesting. He's wearing this hoodie. Not sure how we <laughs> feel about the hoodie. I don't know if I want to deal with a hoodie, but I think I'm just going to focus on his face. And I have to say, the lack of eyebrows again feels like Da Vinci. You know, like Mona Lisa. Yeah. No eyebrows, right? I. I I, I'm buying it. I'm I mean, buying you can what sort of buy it. So, so let's. I think we can do better than Da Vinci. Let's be honest. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I'm digging the hairstyle. He was a friar. He was a friar, not an air friar, but a uh, Catholic friar. So that's presumably what the what the whole deal with the thing was. So mm -hmm. yeah. So I just think he's an interesting face. Let's try drawing him. I think he's going to look nice in the gray book. Yeah. So the gray book. What I like about the Gray Book is um, it provides a tone for you. So unlike, say, white paper, you know, this you already have your midtones there. You have your midtone um, provided for you. So you can use colored pencils. You can use fountain pens. You can use uh, water-based markers. You can use fine liners um, to add the, the darker parts, right? But then we can also add in white. That is what one of the things that I think is particularly fun and interesting. Now, I do did, you always start with the eye when you do a portrait? I don't, but I was talking to my friend, Franz Van Stone. And was it no, Franz? No, it was Helen. Um, Helen's here. Helen Lee Fapard, who was talking about how um, Lapin had, had taught us to start with the eyes yeah because i feel like the, i don't usually see you do that i don't it's true and so i've been thinking about that all week and i thought you know what i'm going to try starting with the eyes could be a disaster let's see it's going to be great yeah how many eyes are you know the window of the soul is it the window yeah the window of the soul or the windows 95 of the soul depending on if you're an accountant and you're into excel that's a terrible joke change my lighting a bit you know because it's reflecting so yeah i'm also drawing with pencil so this is like a whole new oh state. so helen says she always starts with the right eye so uh, you did manage to kind of well take it, your own road no that is his right eye oh it's a good point it's, it's it's luca's right eye so yeah so yeah i think he, i think he has an interesting face he has, is this what's called a Roman nose? Even though he wasn't Roman, he was Florentine. He lived his whole life in Florence. But you think about something like Albrecht Durer coming from Germany, hanging out, I think, hanging out with da Vinci. I mean, first of all, it was a, it was a pretty major undertaking. Am I wrong? A major undertaking to travel from Germany to Florence in the Middle Ages? For sure. I mean, not many people did. I mean, that was that was a, an arduous journey. What is it that, that you like about the Middle Ages? Everything. 
Okay, so can you narrow it down a bit? I mean, I you like, studied you studied it in college. That was your major, right? Yeah, I, I like this. I like sort of the smallness of it. You know, the world was small, and there was a lot of mystery. And there were things to, you know, discover. But also, you had a day that was your routine. You know, a program, as you like to say, it didn't have massive amounts of excitement because you kind of people didn't know about time. Had it all carved out for you. People didn't have a sense of time. They didn't have in the Middle Ages people like they, you know, they didn't have clocks. Well, they did have the sense of the passing of time because they had festivals. Yeah, I, but I'm saying in, in the given course of a day, it wasn't like oh my god, I've got a meeting and I've got a Zoom meeting in 15 minutes. You know? Well, the the, I mean, we have read about people in the the, you know, before electricity, right? So that's a great deal of history, but. They would go to bed on the early side, wake up again, and then go do stuff. Like that was when you I, had your activities. That was when you go visit neighbors. In the middle of the night, you mean? That's when you would like make whoopee. In the and middle of the night. Would, and then you would yeah. have your second sleep in the, yeah. So you would go to bed, like you'd do your work, you'd have your dinner, you'd go to bed, sleep a couple of hours, get up and like boogie oogie. I do that now though. I know. So. I'm a, you know why? Because I'm a Renaissance man. There you go. Boom, boom, but yeah, the whole thing like sleeping for eight hours at a time, that's relatively uh, recent. So um, I am work. I'm, you know, whenever you, when you do a drawing like this, there's always like these moments of fear. And this is one of them <laughs> is drawing the, when you skip to the mouth, you know, and you think, okay, it's mouth, like the eyes really, again, crucial. The nose. You know, have I made the nose the right length? I think I have. I think I have. Um, John Patton, a Middle Ages fan. Excellent. Are you going to measure? Are you doing any measuring? You know, I'm, I should be doing measuring. So I'm going to do some measuring here. I'm holding my pencil up to the screen where my picture is. And uh, I'm measuring. Let me measure. What should I measure? I'm going to measure the length of his nose compared to the width of his eyes. Okay? So here, the length of his nose. Can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm holding the pencil up to the screen, and then I'm comparing that. So I hold it up to the nose, and then I check the length. Of the nose. Yeah, that's more or less correct, I think. So the, the this distance is this distance from here to here about the same as, as his nose. It is. You're really showing off your hairy wrist there. I know. I'm letting the ar uh, hair on my arms grow out. <laughs> braid it later you know i mean usually it's a winter thing but um so yeah so anyway so that when you take that leap to the mouth you can suddenly get really paranoid about it it's a little tiny smile doesn't he a little smile but then he has this sort of sagging side to his mouth too as if he had a stroke well, or it's like one side is smiling right yeah maybe maybe it's his Maybe sneering. No. How could this guy sneer? He's full of happiness. Doing accounting all day long and magic tricks. He was actually a math teacher. He started out by teaching, like, obviously, boys, because girls didn't go to school in those days. And, um, and then he started writing these math books. And it was kind of a big deal because he, unlike a lot of, people in the clergy. He didn't start out by learning in Latin. He learned in, I guess, Italian. Which you wouldn't think is such a big deal. I mean, Italian isn't that, that different from Latin, is it? I think it is. It is. Did you study Latin? I did in high school. So I don't remember much of it. All I remember from it is learning the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, they had an emphasis. Well, but I, but my, the reason that we learned the Lord's Prayer was, I don't know why we did it actually, because I didn't go to a, a really, I went to a Quaker school. So my teacher, my Latin teacher was certainly not, um, didn't have some other agenda. But I still know it. Pater nostro quesin caeli sanctificatum nomen tuum, 
that when he had fe- uh, with, that when he had regnum tuum fiat voluntas tua sicut in Caelo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodiet in dimito nobis debita nostris meos in ducas in temptationem, something like that. Jeez. I know. Your brain is a scary place sometimes. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how correct that is. It's been 40, 48 years since I learned it. But I don't think Latin's changed much in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Just more people have forgotten it. So. All right, so this is sort of, so I've added some, some tone um, but I'm sort of treating this pencil because, I, again, I'm not that used to drawing with pencils. So I'm treating this pencil kind of more like a pen in that I'm sort of doing cross hatching. I'm not like using the side of my pencil to add tone. You know, you could do that sort of that kind of thing. But I'm t- as you can see, I'm not interested in this hoodie. I'm not getting into that whole thing. I just want to focus on his face. Um, so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out. This is my fa- one of my favorite things about gray is. Let's do a bit of that. Just add in a little bit of white. And uh, I really, I've, I've gone through periods where I just drew in gray. And uh, it's really nice. I mean, I've just, just drew on gray paper. And the thing is, you can also, I mean, colors look great on this. I'm just doing something all in tones. But colors look really great on gray paper as well. Let me show you this example. Right here is here's an orange. One second, let's, let's scratch on this paper. You know, see how that's how bright that is? Looks good, doesn't it? I think that's much more um, impressive than than it might be on just on white paper. But yeah, I think that that looks really good. Luca's not getting any color though. I'm not sure why you chose to draw something monochromatic when I know. colored pencils look so I good. Know. And it's not even a, it's not even my reference is color. I mean, you impress us with your like Latin recall, and then you like common sense m- miss the mark. You know, I'm a deeply flawed person. All right, well. What do you think it'll be like next week when we have a cavalcade of medieval accountants appearing on the screen? I think it's going to make a lot of people happy. <laughs> it's going to be pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We're interviewing a new accountant because uh, oh, that's right. You know, yeah. We moved from New York to Arizona, and it's it's time to, we have get, to get somebody who knows too legit who knows what to quit. Do- somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. 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 My previous accountant was just like, eh, eh, they probably do that in Arizona. <laughs> Uh, Our previous okay. accountant was lovely. And he was a gem. Do you think he's watching today? I mean, I think we should send him this as a, you know, he doesn't yet He'll know say, that he's been oh fired. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that Luca? Oh, my God. Yeah. This, do you think that accountants have, like, um, posters of famous Bobble accountants? Heads. Like, hanging on the on their wall above their bed when they were teenagers? Boy bands, like here it is, the f- the Fed chairman. Here he is. Oh my god! Some of this hatching you're doing is giving him a, like a little Frankenstein moment, like on the forehead. Here's the thing about pencil: you can do this. No, uh, oh, this you mean? Yeah. And the forehead. Well, he does have he does have this sort of little. If you look right above his eye, but oh, that was nice. That. Like that smudgy? Yeah, that was really nice. Yeah. Such a mistake with your smudge. Yeah. Sorry, I keep moving because I'm getting, I get quite a lot of glare. The camera, unfortunately, is not getting glare, but I'm getting glare from this light. Let's turn it off a second see what happens. That's not too bad. What do you think? Uh, you can still see it well, right? Now, yeah. now I can actually see what I'm doing. Oh, oh that's what he looks like. <laughs> yeah. 
He's kind of got the uh, dumb and dumber hair. Right. <laughs> you know, actually, I had this haircut because my, <laughs> when I, because my mother used to cut my hair. And... You had this haircut plus, like, a mullet. No, I didn't have a mullet, no. It was just, like, sticking out in every direction. But there was that. But my mother would just kind of, like, smush my hair down and then take a pair of scissors and just, like, hack at it. And that's kind of... That's that was my. I don't know when that stopped exactly, but it certainly it went on until we. I was in high school, almost thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, went on for quite a while. She wanted to make sure you didn't have any dates. She wanted to save money. I don't know what she why she did it. She didn't cut her own hair. Of course not. No. Yeah, well, I was abused. To try and dig up a, a photo of that period so you can see that I'm not making it up. Yeah, bring it next week. It is always good for a laugh. <laughs> That's my life you're laughing at. <laughs> and I have a little bit of white in some other places. You're really not going to do the hoodie? No. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Because it's, no. Because then you have to get into the shading on the side. You see? But you see, you see how, the, how like, the hood kind of trails off into the darkness? Which means I'd have to deal with the whole darkness. I'd have to deal, deal with the darkness. And that's just too much. I just don't want to go there. I just like his face. He looks sort of... Like an, an old Italian woman. Twiggy's sleeping quite contentedly. You can hear her almost oh, snoring. Twiggy. Twiggy had sort of a rough week. We had to yeah. take her to the emergency room at one point. She's okay. She just has bad allergies. That's what happens when you're a pug. You got a smushed in face. But she 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 ate something in the yard. We thought she swallowed a bee. Yeah. They never found a stinger. It was scary. It's been a big week. We saw live music. We're going to see live music again. We're going to go see tomorrow. live music on Friday. And then tonight we're going out to our favorite restaurant because it's our brother-in-law's birthday. Yeah. Presto Ricky. Presto is, uh, do you think he cares about his birthday? I do. Did I we buy, he... we haven't bought him a present really though. I did. I got him the, the coupon to buy Diamondbacks. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Do you think we should maybe give him some sketchbook school paraphernalia? I, I mean, who, I mean, who doesn't, who well, doesn't we could, want We that? should give him the sketchbook school Loves Taurus sticker. Oh, that's true. I sent out a bunch of uh, Gemini stickers this week. It's about to be Gemini season. Hard to believe. This year is flying. Time is flying. Yeah, when does it change? In three days. Yeah, I think it's, it's very soon. What's going on with my hair? Yeah. I mean, do you think I could pass this off as like an original... Da Vinci sketch that he did in order to do this drawing. Because I have to say, on the on the internet, I have not seen a lot of drawings of him, of Luca. Yeah, this could be a rare thing, and people could say, you know, well, I mean, who? Why else would anybody draw that in, unless it was to do a painting of him? Are you going to put like some numbers and figures around? Are you just going to have this like disembodied head floating on the page? Yeah, I'm thinking of like. You know, if you think about like uh, anger, you know anger, no, nope. I N G R E S. You don't know his drawings. No, he would draw into this is this drawing is starting to remind me of that. And uh, I think it's perfectly okay to do a disembodied head. I don't know. I'm not sure about it's like it. Like a death mask. Well. Why is that? I mean, good? He is de de he is dead. I haven't checked. I that. Yes, we we understand that. 
don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 because I, I, because I'm afraid of the hood. Why don't you give him and boys in the hood? I mean, you can use draw from your imagination. I don't really have much of an imagination. Uh, Melissa Boswell wants astrology stickers. When's your birthday, Melissa? Johannes Kepler. Why is Connie bringing him up? Johannes Kepler. Well, I think he's in the like same category of brilliance. Yeah, see, Jen Cahill knows about anger. Jen Cahill is very smart. You don't have to be, I mean, she may be, but you don't have to be that smart to know about man anger. But she also knew about LP and that she whistles. Yes. God, that whistling was insane. So good. Insane. Aquarius. Melissa's well, Aquarius. Well, you'll have to wait until February to get something from us. Or January. So. Oh, Twiggy has the hiccups. So I think we are uh, in pretty good shape on this guy. I don't know. I what? don't know. You're troubled by the by the lack of the full head. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care what you think anymore. Okay. This is my domain. It's draw with me, not draw an entire head with me. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I think I'm going to stop. But um, why don't you draw for another minute or two? Because I want to see if I can find... One thing to show you. I want to see if I can find one thing to show you. So, uh, JJ, why don't you talk, tell tell them about? Uh, sh do you want to show Twiggy and see how she's doing? Oh, she's <laughs> so like the fur child that she is. She's climbing up on my shoulder to be held. Yes. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna have to wait until next week to show you what I was gonna show you. So I'll show it to you next week. We'll still be here. All right. I feel pretty good about that. I hope that you all enjoyed drawing Luca Pacioli, the uh, mass, the modern, what is the father of modern accounting? Or probably of accounting altogether. Yeah, magic, he wrote his book and magic which, tricks. And magic tricks and all kinds of mathematical principles. Friend of Leonardo da Vinci. Not that kind of a friend. Um, and a uh, friend of Albert Durer, we think, maybe, but all around good guy. I and mean, I think it's kind of cool that you have an accountant who was hanging with the cool artists. Well, art and science, you know. That's true. But they also just, art like, and accounting. They just piggybacked off of each other. Every major yeah. scientific development was, discovery was sort of predicted by artists, and they kind of That's have true. the same idea at the same time. I mean, and Da Vinci was a big scientist, way. as we know. Yeah. Well, Melissa says she's sending us, she's celebrating stationery by sending us and Twiggy a letter. Aww. That's nice. Did we ever put the, uh, our email, our post office box in here? I did. Because I'm going to put right. it on the screen because people who are I'll, watching I'll the recording. I'll cut and paste. Let me do this. Yeah, just send it to me so I can put it on the screen. I think that'll be exciting. Oh, I don't know what I did now. If See? a broader audience can send us. More stuff. I mean, we've got to balance out we all like the these, snacks. these tax letters. That's really... <laughs> we don't get that many tax At least I don't. Yeah, you, you... you. I ignore them. I shield you from these. No, I'm not one of those people. I, 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 I'm I, pretty responsible. Well, we always... We are... Hey, if you pay taxes, you're... We live in Arizona where taxes are not really taken that seriously. But uh, yeah, here we go. That's exciting. Here it is. Post office box 45365. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona, 85064. Before midnight tonight, operators are standing by to read your mail. Thank you. What do you think? Yeah, good. All right. Good. So um, let's just quickly wrap this up. Finished kind of early today. Why not? You know, in the old days, Draw With Me was like 10 minutes. It's, it's been dragging out with all this extra business, co-hosts and animals. <laughs> so anyway, info at sketchbookschool.com, get on it. Danny'sEssays.com, my weekly essay, and the launch of my new secondary essay, which is called Studio Notebook, 
You'll find out about that when you sign up. Studio today. Notebook. Yeah. And celebration it's of no- Notebook, notebook Day. Is it Notebook Week? Notebook Day. It's Notebook Day. It's Stationary Week. Notebook Day is a subset of Stationary Week. The Art for All podcast. We're getting ready to wind up the season. I'm going to announce that today. We have a couple, two or three more episodes, and then we're stopping for the season, taking the summer off. Because JML is going to the Galapagos. John Muir Laws is going to Africa. As one will do. And he's going to the Galapagos. And so we're moving on to other stuff. Uh, I want to see your Lucas, Luca, Fra Luca Pacioli's. So please share them on social media, Instagram, Facebook, or the schoolyard. But if you do it on Instagram or Facebook, please tag it, hashtag SBS, as in Sketchbook School, SBS Draw With Me. And we will add it to the beginning of next week's show, which will be extremely fun, extremely exciting. Oh, Nina, Nina misses the Sketchbook tours. Perhaps you should tell her about the new series you're filming. I'm filming a new series with uh, sketchbook artists who I know talking about their use of sketchbooks and, uh, you know, different things that they do and showing a lot of their work. It's going to be really cool. And it'll be probably ready to start in a week or so. Yeah. Or two. yeah. So, yeah. So we're starting with, uh, with that soon. That's going to be coming up. And I think I'm also going to be doing some flip through videos of my own sketchbooks. Just like take one sketchbook at a time and go through it and talk a bit about it. So that's another series that I have going because now I don't have to do this, this, this podcast. I have so much time. So anyway, if you are interested in stuff from me, from sketchbook school, Mondays is the podcast for a few more weeks. And then that will be replaced by one of these videos I just talked about. Tuesday. Oh yeah, Tommy Kane has a new book. We should Tommy tell, Kane has tell new book. people well, to check it out. When we get one, we'll talk about it. We haven't gotten a copy. I think of it's it. on pre-order. Okay, so my friend Tommy Kane has a new book about vegan art, or as they say, vegan art, vegan art. Him and a bunch of other vegan artists. Um, yeah, it's it's a leather-bound book. Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's bound in. Cruelty free it's on every bound, level. Bound in uh, unrecycled plastic, and yes. So um, Tuesdays, Tuesdays I send out a notebook, a studio notebook. Wednesday, a day of rest. It's not really. I think I do something on Wednesday. I can't remember what it is. Thursday, draw with me. Friday, Danny's essays. Danny's essays. Saturday. Heavy drinking, Sunday, recovering by the pool, <laughs> Monday, back at it. You know, it's hellish. My life is hell, people. Help me. Help me. No, it's, I live the life of, uh, of a happy man. I'm not sure who he is and when he's coming back to take it, but uh, I'm, you know, that's what I'm doing. Till next time, thanks for drawing with me.